When anyone in my family would catch a cold, I would dash to the grocery store. I would buy fresh chicken, fresh vegetables, wild rice, and I'd make up that wonderful concoction, chicken soup. You see, research indicates that cold medicines may not be very effective for kids. Heck, they're not effective for adults either. Nothing like chicken soup is. Chicken soup builds this powerful mucus and the blood. And I know about blood as a licensed phlebotomist. I've looked at a lot of blood. And when I see this, I'm witnessing the power of the body's defenses. It's not just a bunch of purples and pinks. I'm seeing an army waiting for an invasion. You see, neutrophils, they're fast, they're furious. They're going to destroy invaders. But let's say a virus slips by, escapes the neutrophil. Waiting for it is the hungry lymphocyte. Look at the difference between the two. Neutrophil has a low nucleus. I always know lymphocytes, solid purple or blue nucleus. They have different jobs. They kill different types of invaders. But let's say a parasite. We do have parasites in our modern world. In slips a parasite past the lymphocyte, but waiting for it, eosinophils. They stain kind of pinkly, pinkish and red. And they have a buddy, basophil, very similar job with granular coating. Yeah, they cause allergies. Sometimes they make our, our nose run when we don't want it to but they protect us against those parasites. Well, we've been sick for a few days. The macrophage is going to step in. Big eaters. They have a U-shaped nucleus. They're massive. Sometimes they're bluish or pinkish. They destroy nearly everything. Now we have erythrocytes for de uh, delivering oxygen, nitric oxide. We also have these tiny little platelets right here for blocking the loss of blood. So I like to draw all these things because then I remember them. First responders, lobe nucleus, neutrophil, lymphocyte viruses, solid blue or purplish nucleus, monster monocyte, U-shape. They go everywhere. I love these guys. Brain, bone, nothing stops them. And the two buddies, eosinophil with the red staining granulars, and the basophil covered in granules. Yeah, they cause some allergies, but they are a nightmare for parasites. Euthrocytes are red blood cells for oxygen, nitric oxide, platelets for blocking blood. So we have a challenge here. Here's a challenge. Two patients come into the ER. We're not going to give them names. We're going to keep this confidential. So here is their actual blood. Let's see if we can get a good view of this. Patient one. Patient two. Which one is at highest risk? Now their charts show them to be about the same age. They're uh, in their 70s. And so based on their blood smear, who's at the highest risk? Who do we triage first? Well, I started it for you. I looked at the lymphocytes, and oh, just in case you forgot what lymphocytes look like, they are the solid, let me find one, oh here, I have labeled, solid blue nucleus. Okay, I counted only two in patient one, but patient two had several more. And so, two divided by total, which I don't know my total yet, this is for you guys to do. You're going to get a total number of leukocytes, white blood cells, so you're going to divide each type by the total and then we have a relative amount now here on patient two I got four but I don't know what the total is here so you can't just say well okay this guy's the winner because what if patient two is loaded with neutrophils what if patient one has no monocytes which could be so in the end you look at your numbers and you write a brief triage report who is at highest risk? Now, you don't have to repeat all these numbers because we have them here. 
but just make a statement after you assess the data. And remember, next time you get the sniffles, look at this, 12th century Jewish scholars were already talking about the amazing effectiveness oops, of chicken soup.